Hi, my name is Dr. Jason Scott, and today I'm going to talk about innovations in quadlink ACL reconstruction. Our patient is a 22-year-old male lacrosse player who presented with an ACL tear. During the diagnostic arthroscopy, he was found to have a repairable posterior horn medial meniscus tear. This was repaired with two meniscus cinch 2 implants in a vertical mattress fashion, giving us a stable construct, as you can see here. We then turn our attention to the quad harvest. A two centimeter incision was made at the superior pole of the patella. The section was carried down through the peritinon, which was swept medially, laterally, and proximally. Then a 10 millimeter double blade knife was used to harvest a central slip of the quadriceps tendon to a distance of 65 millimeters. The graft was then removed from the knee and placed on the back table for preparation. Using the fiber tag tightrope implant, we used an RT on the femoral side and an ABS on the tibial side. Two speed whip sutures were passed proximally through the tightrope and then two passes distally to complete our femoral preparation. This was performed similarly on the tibial side. An internal brace was then incorporated into the femoral end of the graft. We then took the graft compression tubes to take our construct, which was now 10.5 millimeters, and compress it down to a graft of 9.5 millimeters. We then turn our attention back to the knee to begin our tunnel preparation. Using the femoral 6-9 guide, we drilled our flip cutter three and visualized its entrance into the joint. Once the flip cutter three device was visualized, we activated it and chose our tunnel size to correlate with a 9.5 millimeter socket. We chose a 9.5 socket here, even though the graft was originally 10.5 millimeters. That compression of the graft during graft preparation allows for graft re-expansion later on to improve our fill of our socket. This is also performed on the tibial side. Once the flip cutter has been activated, our femoral tunnel is created and a shaver is inserted to remove any loose debris prior to passing our fiber stick. The tibial tunnel is created in a similar fashion. The advantage of the flip cutter three is, if my graft size on the tibial end does not match the graft size of my femoral end, I do not need to open up a second flip cutter device. I'm able to simply dial down or dial up to improve my accuracy during tibial tunnel creation. Our graft is passed, and our internal brace here is visualized on the posterior aspect of the graft. And here are the patient's final postoperative radiographs. Thank you.